Hey, welcome back to Zanmai Elf. Woo. Woo. This is great, thank you. Back to you. And you know, we'd like to say a big thank you for everybody that's following our show because, oh, thank you. And that people think that we are so educational, that people love our show so much. And you know, as people who work on the show, we're so happy about that. So thank you guys so much. Uh, I wonder what the topic is today. I see pencil case, laptop, thank you. But I wonder what the topic really is about today. Um, you know, we've had so many people requesting for different topics. Oh, thank you. And now I finally get to know the topic today is on university. Hmm. I know the perfect pair who's going to give us in, uh, some insight into university on the IELTS exam. And they are people that have been very successful in their university applications. And these are two people. And of course, before we meet them, I'm going to prepare a little bit of the script. But we're going to meet them right now, okay? Hey, you're back with us in the studio, and right here we have two people that's going to talk to you about university. They are quite experienced because they've spent the majority of their time in, in a university environment. So let's welcome Pumachi and Bit Nguyen into the studio. Thank you guys for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. us. Thank you. So why, why did you spend so much time in school? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think the e quickest answer is maybe uh, I enjoy school mm -hmm. and I find myself doing well um, in my studies uh, but uh, part of the reason why I have um, spent so much time in school is because each of the stage of my education has been around a different area mm -hmm. and so it keeps me interested in terms of uh, the research that I do and uh, the kind of um, knowledge that I gain from my studies. Mm -hmm. What about you Vic? Uh, I think for me, I generally say it's because I was always bad at making friends and I like to be in libraries <laughs> a little bit more. Um, but also because I like, like tree, I love learning. Um, and the things that I wanted to study has been a little bit more long and involved. Like the process of becoming a doctor is very long. So it's kept me in and about libraries and schools. And a lot of the people want to ask, you, you're both from very prestigious institutions in the U.S. How did you get into those institutions? So I actually um, had never thought about going to one of these fancy schools. I went to a state school for undergraduate. So it really wasn't part of my trajectory, per se. It wasn't like a dream that I dared to dream, even. Um, but it turned out that I think like life sort of brought me there in many ways. And partially, I, I think the process was that it seemed like a good school for my professional development mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I'm about to apply for residency again. So mm -hmm. I'm diving into the letters of recommendation and the personal statements and the transcripts and things like that. And it makes me realize that preparing for these applications is a long process. It's, yes. it's been my entire life. It's not the three months before the application is due. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a process of learning for myself what I care about and what matters, building the relationships that can help me in that process of developing the skills necessary mm -hmm. to progress academically or professionally. Mm -hmm. So the story on my part is a little funny because I grew up in uh, Central Square, Cambridge, mm -hmm. which is about a 15 minute walk from Harvard University. Yeah. But uh, growing up and going to high school, uh, we always thought of uh, Harvard Yard, which is the area where a lot of the classes and um, the students lived in the dormitory. We thought of Harvard Yard as just a yard that we walked through to mm -hmm. get to Harvard Square mm -hmm. to hang out and have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in high school, uh, we just hung out in Harvard Square a lot. Yeah. But uh, the short story is that uh, after junior year, uh, we have to take the PSAT back mm -hmm. in my days. Um, and uh, uh, after getting your score, if you get a certain range, uh, the, the schools will send you a catalog. And so uh, I received a catalog that summer and the Harvard brochure looked very nice. So I started having a different, different image yes. of what Harvard Yard stood for. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that sort of inspired me to study hard for the test to be able to prepare myself for the application. But one of the honest truths uh, about why uh, to pursue these uh, prestigious schools is that uh, in, in, in America at least, um, these are the schools that have the most resources. Mm -hmm. And Harvard has a, a very good financial 
aid um, yes, package. Program. And so if you're a student who work hard to get yourself to the stage of being able to have good test scores or a good um, resume, you are providing an opportunity for yourself to have a chance to get an education for free. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of, uh, I think, uh, a great incentive for young people um, to think about. I think one of, the, one of the main goals that a lot of the Vietnamese um, students right now, when, when it comes to choosing a new university, mm. it is <clears throat> what can I do or what can I study so that I can be financially stable mm. and I can mm. make the most money. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I think on the one hand, that is, that is a yeah. real you know, thing they have to think about yes. um, to sustain their families. But on the other hand, I think you know, there, there should also be room for, for us all to think about what we like to do, what we're passionate about and what we, where we see ourselves as people in the long term. Not with what career, but, what, but with what we're going to be doing. I think right. it's more important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you guys reflected that idea very, very well in, in your decision you know, to, to, to pick whatever to study in university. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, I think I actually, coming back here this time, I have a lot of hope that people can pursue different interests and find a way to make it financially sustainable. Like as we're becoming a much more like global world, um, there's a lot more investment for different ideas and different thoughts that may not be so conventional. I think I was building on your last point and also trying to connect that to your um, sort of uh, reflection that in a rapidly developing economies, there are certain skill sets or experiences that are valuable and young people want to acquire those kind of skill sets in order to get a job or you know provide for their family mm -hmm. their future uh, to advance for, for career advancement. And there's a lot of valuable experience from observing how life works yes, on the street. Absolutely. Um, and part of the community work I was doing at the time was learning how to listen to people. Because uh, people will have different pressures, stress, and, and, and sort of uh, challenges that face them in, in their community, in their individual lives, or with their jobs. And um, one of the way that one can gain sort of this both like sort of the intellectual, the, the high level um, analytical skills, and there's also soft skills such as emotional intelligence mm -hmm. or the ability to, uh, to interact, make people feel comfortable when you meet mm -hmm. someone new. And a lot of the soft skills are actually not maybe stressed yes. in the education system here. Yes. In the sense that actually one of the most successful, I think, uh, thing that one can prepare oneself for is coming to an elite university, you're going to meet a lot of people not from the same background as you. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet people with very totally different maybe you know, ways to communicate uh, maybe different sort of uh, economic, socioeconomic background. And you're going to be in touch with them and you have to communicate with them through your mm -hmm. four years. Mm -hmm. So one way is sort of how does one prepare oneself to be able to listen, to be able to be, you know, at time get into conflict. Um, and, and maybe in Vietnam sometimes it's, conflicts is not so good. <laughs> Everyone wants to agree and sort yeah. of just like have fun and just yeah. take it easy. Yes. But actually conflict is something that uh, in, in, the, in the American university system, one, it's a, it's a growing process. So, so I think conflict is actually linked to leadership too. And the ability to handle conflict, listen, and also to still maintain a, a friendship or a, a, a relationship through conflict. It's something that me and Vic may have some experience with <laughs> too in the past year. I think to bounce off on Tree's idea about leadership, mm. I think one of the values of taking leadership positions or trying to engage with these problems is actually it develops empathy, mm -hmm. like an ability to recognize how difficult it is to lead. So regardless of whether or not you ultimately come to like lead a corporation, mm -hmm. you might be able to negotiate the the difficult interprofessional relationship a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There's this idea by uh, like an author and anthropologist I think her name's Ann Fadiman um, mm -hmm. and she writes about like standing at the shoreline mm -hmm. um, she wrote a pretty well-known book called when uh, the spirit catches you and you fall down mm -hmm. and she mentioned how her role as a writer standing at the cusp between the family's losses and the doctors um, was like the shoreline between the ocean and the sand mm -hmm. and how there at those points of turbulence is where you can see the most dynamic changes and the most movement and Absolutely. there is where you can see both the ocean and the land you know mm -hmm. So to, to not, for me, it's always been inspiring to not shy away from things that are difficult or uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, because they can be growing moments. Absolutely. One, one point I want to highlight, which builds off of what it just mentioned and also may be useful for students uh, in Vietnam wanting to you know, have an aspiration for studying over, uh, over overseas, overseas right? and uh, or preparing themselves culturally for that transition, is that 
Uh, one thing that Vietnam share in common is the experience coming from immigrant background. Mm -hmm. uh, our parents were uh, immigrated from Vietnam to the United States um, when I was very young, you know, before Viet was born. <laughs> um, but we grew up, you know, these dynamics of co conflict mm -hmm. and change and empathy is extremely important in our ex life experience for survival in some ways. Um, we grew up in immigrant families in which our parents were navigating a new, completely new cultural system, trying to make a living. Whereas we were learning the language, acquiring a new tongue in some ways, mm -hmm. but then how does that language, you know, how do we communicate that back to our parents who are in some way from another culture, from a Vietnamese culture? Mm -hmm. Whereas we are somewhat hybrids, or we are hybrids, Vietnamese, <laughs> American. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we get older and become more fluent in sort of like the institutional workings of a new country, we either have to translate or support our family in navigating that, but we also have new aspirations, come, you know, being raised in that system. And so that also leads the question to, you know, a lot of adaptation, flexibility, but um, it, it may lead to the also our experience of coming back to Vietnam afterwards and how that <laughs> plays out. <laughs> I think, yeah, you guys touched on a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of things that I think that's very important. And you know, to, you, to yeah. viewers watching at home, I think you're probably, if you're considering university, you're, you're also faced with the big question of, you know, who you are, of um, how you are academically compared to others, what university choice, you know, how does that, how is that going to influence your future? But if, if you've listened to our conversations, I think a lot of, you know, the things that we should really, really be focusing on is who we are and how do we protect ourselves and what do we want to do, not necessarily in terms of career, but where do we see ourselves affecting, mm. you know, the community and affecting other people. And I think those are some of the key, um, key points that we should also look at when we consider university options. Nowadays, there's a lot of information out there. You can look at how to apply to U.S. universities online. You can look at how to apply to U.K. universities online. And if you're considering a Vietnamese education, you know, focus well on your score <laughs> in order to get into that, uh, those schools. But at the end of the day, right, university is just a platform for us all to grow. And you know, what we do with our university education and what we do after university is also really important as well. So I think university is really just the starting point of everything. Yeah. Um, would you like to showcase each other and also us some things that are not academic, you know, that are not... Um, that, that are fun, that are, <laughs> that are some of your talents? So, I can do something. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a silly song, I think. Maybe, you know, reflective of... Uh, I actually attended <clears throat> kindergarten in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but then uh, moved to uh, the United States at the age of seven. So, uh, this is a song I like to do. Um, <laughs> it's a little silly, but hopefully it's fun. Maybe people will laugh. Definitely they will laugh about <laughs> me. Uh, I will perform it too, but please excuse me if it's very silly. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll woo. provide moral support. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Vic. Uh, Vic, not Vic. My hack la mo con vit. One duck. Yeah. All right. So, mo con vit. No, sorry. Hi, gay gun. No, kill lan. Quack, 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 quack. Gap ho nook. No, be bomb, be bomb. Like, learn bờ. No, way can cho ko. Nếu mà nói sai, uh, if I say something wrong in Vietnamese, uh, excuse me, uh, but it's been a long time since kindergarten, but I want to perform something just for fun. You know what I realized about that performance? You made one little mistake. Mm. Hmm. Yes. At the end, you were like, Vậy cái cánh cho khô, right? And then you weren't shaking the, 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 you weren't shaking the wings, you were shaking something else. Yeah, sorry, maybe I was thinking the doing. Uh, so maybe tails, wings, yeah. But maybe Vit was probably doing it correctly. No, no, she was following you. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's very really embarrassing. Can yeah, I sit down now? She's <laughs> following, she was following the mother duck way. Right. <laughs> okay, maybe, yes. All right, so Viet, um, what are you going to um, do for us? So like part of my year here, I think part of, I didn't grow up in Vietnam, mm. and so I had never heard any like Vietnamese folk songs or childhood songs. Um, and uh, throughout this year and through my travels and interviews and such, I got the chance to learn a lot of these like classic Vietnamese childhood songs. And I was touched because they're so much more emotional mm -hmm. and so much more um, authentic in some ways than like the wheels on the bus, you mm -hmm. know? <clears throat> so I'm just gonna sing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I shared a bit about my mom. Mm -hmm. So I think like there's that whole bit to it too. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> 
yêu chân mẹ phải đi làm xa con yêu tay mẹ trai làng trai sắm làng ra mẹ thường dậy sớm nấu nồi cơm đầy mẹ thường ngủ muôn trăm đèn vá mây con yêu mẹ lắm bằng chân ông sâu con yêu mẹ lắm bằng chân ông trăng con yêu mẹ lắm bằng chân ông trời And how did you learn about this song? And how, how is that related to you and your mother? <laughs> um, so I had the privilege of going on this trip throughout Vietnam. Um, and it was connected with a lot of different elements of <coughs> promoting education, as well as providing musical inspiration and parts of public health. Um, and I was very fortunate to be able to share about a lot of different topics that are important to me. Uh, whether it's like oral hygiene or uh, more importantly like sexual reproductive health mm -hmm. to young girls um, and like Q&A consultations about general health issues like high blood pressure, joint pain, sleep problems. So in that process I was introduced to a bunch of Vietnamese folk songs. Amongst them there was this and um, and Đi Đức Cơm. Mm -hmm. um, just all these things that are tinged with uh, this idyllic childhood in like rural landscapes that I have never experienced but I think have always sort of yearned for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of the imagery in that song, I think, um, speaks to my experience of what my mother was too. Like someone who was always hardworking, who always made sure that people mm -hmm. were fed first, who always stayed up late, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. All right. Oh, we've got, oh. Okay, so <coughs> next up is the IELTS Marathon. Yes. Wow. So let's go. Break things up. This is the new version of IELTS Marathon Challenge. Here comes the devil's face, in which one of two guests will be blindfolded. Then the other one will guide the way to find the item based on the guiding description. Moving on at the monitor, a set of speedy IELTS questions will be ready to challenge you. Calm down, don't freak out. Since the last challenge could be the hardest one, sneak up shame. Our guests will have the arms and legs be tied together, but still have to move forward, avoiding eyesight of our host, and at the same time, collecting five letters. The last letter is kept by Phoebe, and our guests who have to persuade her to get this final letter, then form a word. Is it hard enough to challenge our guests? We'll see, right now, on IELTS Marathon Challenge. Hey, you're back on Dan IELTS, and this is the Dan IELTS Marathon Challenge. And we have two contenders today, not just one, and they are G and Viet. Welcome them. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you, you guys have been so educated. You've been in school for so long. Uh, I assume this is probably going to be an easy challenge. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. All right. So, first up, we have a blindfold for you. Ah. And G, you're going to blindfold yourself. Okay. I'm very happy that. <laughs> All right. So right now, both of you will have to close your eyes. All right. One, two, three. Close your eyes. You both can open your eyes, but I know only one person can see. Right. Via, so. you can direct Chi now to find the information letter, okay. the passport, as well as the set of keys. Okay. All right, my friends. Yes. I think that you should squat down mm -hmm. and feel. Put put your hands straight down. Okay. okay. Go to the side, go to your right. Go to my right. Yeah. Okay. Um, pick it up, let's see if we have anything. Pick it up. Confirmation letter. Oh! <laughs> Reach out in front of you with your right hand. Okay. Um, I, I, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah there you I go. Heard Perfect. Something. Good, yes. good work. Okay. 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 There might be a problem. The confirmation letter needs to be detached. Ah, okay. Ah, so, I take this off. Yeah, good. Yes. Nice. Okay. okay. So, we have one more thing. Okay. Um, I think it's a passport. Yes. So it's probably in a little container thing. Maybe you can move to your left. Your feet have a bunch of things underneath them. So if I were you, I would stand up. Okay. Take a step back. Okay.
It looks like a wallet. Open it. There's a big zipper. Okay. This is good teamwork. Was it easy? No, is this? Um, yes. Right. Yes. Cool. You got all three things. Okay, got now, it. now you got to direct him to come give it to me. Oh, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. So, um, rotate. Uh, yes, probably this wait, way. Wait, wait, uh, Turn another 90 degrees to your right. To my right. Walk straight. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Good, I okay. I need to find Phoebe. Stop. <laughs> turn to your left. Okay. Great. How, how many degrees? There you go. Walk okay. straight. Okay. Take slow steps because you will come to a, a platform. Come on, little duck. Oh, hi you there. You did it. Okay, now hand it to her. She's to your right. Okay. Um, hi, Phoebe. Hi. Here's a key. Okay. Uh, where are you? Sorry. Yeah. Um, and a passport and my invitation letter perfect. to attend this okay, thing. Okay. Now I need your I need your mask also. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me see. That's perfect. You guys ah. passed the challenge. And Yay. you're off to the next challenge. Okay. And please move on over there. All right, we are now moving on to the next section. These are some of the test questions that IELTS candidates have to go through. And uh, we're going to start off with the headphone challenge. Chi will start it. May we have the sound, please? You will hear the organizer of a rock festival talking to the exhibitors and performers at a planning meeting. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad you could all make this planning meeting for what promises to be the biggest and most colorful free rock festival ever held in the Southeast. Uh, so whether you're a performer, a craft exhibitor, or an artist, we all extend a big welcome to you. Uh, could we turn first to the plan, so I can familiarise you with the layout of the site, which, as you know, is an old football stadium. We're really lucky to have so much space this year. You can see the main gate at the bottom of the plan. Have you found it? Uh, that's where most visitors will enter. It's also the entrance for those taking part in the craft fair. We've set the stalls just inside the gate on the left in a circle. Yes. Uh, I believe the craft fair would be in number one here. You're absolutely correct. And Yay. now, Viet, you just need to find one mistake very quickly. Um, number 14 in section two. Why is this wrong? They're giving us letter choices, A through Q, and X is not in that option. Absolutely. All right, we, we go on to the next section, which is the paraphrase challenge. You guys can work with each other to just uh, to, to choose three letters and come up with three synonyms. Okay. Reducing annually and what would you like? Okay. For so annually, you uh, one can also use yearly. Um, reducing uh, could also be decreasing. Measures we can also say other means. It's accepted. <laughs> So next up is the pronunciation challenge. Each of you is going to read one sentence and we have an automatic voice recognition system that's going to recognize your voice. And the system needs to recognize one full sentence before full we can sentence. move on. All okay. Right. It can come from either one of you. Okay. All right. I will take the first sentence. The program awards grants to U.S. faculty and professionals approved to join the specialist roster. They will engage in short-term collaborative projects of eligible institutions in over 140 countries worldwide. Funds are from the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Participating host institutions cover grantee in-country costs. All right, you guys passed. Now that you're done with all of the challenges, congratulations and step up here. Great. High five. Good job. That was a very, very fast. We are moving on to the final challenge, and it is called the Sneak of Shame. All right, take it easy, and good luck. Thanks. Okay, welcome back. This is the Sneak of Shame, and if you're wondering why these people have <laughs> their hands and legs tied together, and that's because we're going to have a game, a race of statues, um, and you're going to basically teamwork again to try to pick up these letters on the floor while being tied together, okay? Okay. And of course, every time I turn around on the count of three, you have to freeze in whatever direction or okay. whatever um, posture that you're in until I turn my back to you. Okay. All right, we're going to start now. <laughs> All right, sneak of shame starts now. One, two, three. 
One, two, two and a half, three. Ooh. One, two, three. <laughs> How does it feel to be hand and leg tied together? Uncomfortable. <laughs> I think those counts for my yoga workout for the day. <laughs> Might be true. We're almost there. One, two, three. <laughs> three. Okay, all right, you're very close. I think you, you're almost there. One, two, three. You gotta, you gotta tag me, huh? don't forget to tag me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I'm tagged. <laughs>How did that feel? It's surprisingly challenging. Yeah. What was the most difficult part about that challenge? Being caught in uh, difficult positions, mm -hmm. literally. How did you communicate to move at the same time? We had a strategy, but it didn't quite work. <laughs> Eventually you got it. So, yes. all right, so right now you have five letters in your hands. Yes. yes. I have the final letter. Okay. And I think you probably need my letter mm. to form the word. Um, mm. How do we get this last letter? You have to convince me to give it to you. Okay. Maybe so. we should strategize together. Okay, you got you got two minutes to strategize. Okay, let's let's move over here. Yeah. Let's strategize. Okay. Alright, I know, sir. Okay. Okay, Phoebe, what is the your favorite thing to do in your free time? Oh, my favorite thing is to eat steak. Steak. Mm. What if Vid and I uh, offer to take you out for a nice steak dinner whenever you are free? Mm -hmm. If you give us that last letter so we can manage to figure out how to spell. Wow, you're, you're the first people on the show that have offered me a tangible benefit to giving <laughs> oh. you the letter. So I, I feel very powerful in this position here. I, I've this gotten... offer will only last for the next 30 seconds until we <laughs> get a chance to offer you whatever that is. So oh. you can buy in or maybe <laughs> rise it. Okay, I buy in. Ah. I buy in. When it comes to food, I buy in. Yes. There you go. Thank you so Fabulous. much. All okay. right, great. So now so we get to figure out. Yes, so now you have all these letters. What can the what can it be? Okay, so we have a C and an I, a T, okay. two M's and an O. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, you, maybe you should hold on to these two. O-M, Om. Let's yeah. see, something with Om. Something with Om. Something with I C. Maybe. Let's see, what if it's yeah. Saying, oh, let and me see. The M's probably go I together. Think they have it. I think they oh, have it. Oh, maybe yeah. this is uh, very relevant to here, here. The, what we just asked you, Phoebe. It Two. spells uh, oh. com commit. 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 It's it. also the fastest scram unscrambling session that we've ever had on the show. Oh, congratulations! Two you brains. got the letter. Thank Two you. Brains. And uh, and we hope that uh, you know today has been a wonderful chance for us to to, to discuss with you about the tactics <laughs> for studying and uh, and for IELTS. Thanks so much for participating in the game. Thank you for being on our show. And if there is if there are three words or three vocabulary uh, pieces of advice that you'd like to give to our audiences watching at home about university and university admissions, what will it be? I would say uh, hard work. Um, I would say personality. Mm. And I would say discipline, self-discipline. Mm -hmm. I would say joy. Joy, oh, yeah. that's a very good word, yeah. yeah. Yes. I think because it's important for us to love what we do. Right. Yes. And it's not just about work, it's also about studies, it's also about university applications as well. So mm. try as much as possible to love what we do. Right. Mm. All right, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much for having yeah. us on your yeah. show. And for you guys watching at home, you know, this is an opportunity for you to not only learn about university admissions, but it's also an opportunity for you to, you know, find some inspiration to discover yourself, discover what, what you like, and discover things that are outside of, you know, that paper application. Um, and make use, make full use of your application and your university decision. Thank you. And guys, next up is the idioms of the week section. And we know that you always love that section. And just a sneak peek, this, this time the idioms of the week is going to be talking about university. So stay tuned, don't go away. Idiom of this week, with flying colors. If you do something such as pass an exam with flying colors, you do it very successfully. Next on Tamayos, 
Here comes our talented hot girl, Mai Bích Ngọc. She will be chosen for Stars Duel this week. Go, go, girl! Hope you can hit it at your best. And of course, you cannot miss the useful comments, unique tips from our most wanted British Council IELTS expert, Dan Ruel. Also, voice of the week coming last but not least. To many things to be excited. Stay tuned for the next part of Tama Else. We'll be ready right now. Hey, welcome back to the studio. And of course, with every Tama Else episode, we have to have an expert on the show for you. And the expert is basically going to show all of us what really goes on inside the examiner's mind when the, the examiner might be talking to you. So we have our you know, very, very, very familiar IELTS expert in the studio today, Dan and Ruel. Hi, Phoebe. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. So, the topic today is university. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the university students, because I do know you work with a lot of 17, 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, how are they in Vietnam and how do they normally make their university decisions in your experience? Well, I think in general, Vietnamese students are really, really dedicated. Uh, I think, especially compared to me when I was a student, mm -hmm. I wasn't that passionate about my, my education. I think looking back, I could have done a lot more work mm -hmm. uh, in my studies, but I think most Vietnamese students are uh, really take advantage of the opportunity um, and they do a lot of extra work to improve their English language for example and mm -hmm. and these other skills so I, I think in general Vietnamese students are really dedicated hard-working students. In the next section we're going to meet one hot girl who has been quite successful in her academic studies oh. and that's the reason why she she's popular because she's not only a good student she's also pretty and she also dances. Oh. So let's take a look at her performance this week and let's see uh, who she is. Sure. All right, guys, let's take a look at my Big Elk's performance. Hi. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, can I ask your name, please? My name is Ngo. Hi. Can I get your identification, please? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, that's fine. Thank you. Now in this first part, I'm just going to ask you some general questions. What nationality are you? As you can see, I am Vietnamese. What part of your country are you from? I come from the north of Vietnam, Red River Delta in particular. How often do you use the computer? I use the computer frequently for different purposes, such as studying, uh, chatting with my friends, searching for data. Do you like using the internet? Undoubtedly, I do like because I think the internet gives me anything I may need for any purpose I may have. Now I'm going to ask you to talk about a topic for two minutes. Yes. You have one minute to prepare and make some notes. Here's some paper yes, and a can. pen for making notes. And here is your topic. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'd like you to describe a typical day at work, school or college. Okay. All right. Okay, so you have two minutes. Can you start speaking now, please? Since I'm senior at my university, my daily routine is quite complicated with a lot of tasks to do from Monday to Saturday except Sunday when I can enjoy the whole day by myself. I do my graduation thesis every morning then um, I take a rest a little bit at noon before going to the law firm. I'm working as a, an intern in a law firm not very far from my home. I'm responsible for preparing some documentaries for some simple cases to help the lawyer in my firm. After working, I go to the gym. Yeah, I love this one because I want to keep fit. 11 p.m. is the time I finish all stuff 
in a day. I have a habit of reading novel before sleep. Yeah, I think that's my daily routine. If there is one thing I could change in my daily routine, I think it's my graduation thesis. Yeah, actually, I went to finish this as soon as possible to pay my full attention to my internship at the law firm. All right. So now I'm going to ask you some general questions about routines. Um, what are the benefits and drawbacks of having a daily routine? Well, I think daily routine allow us to work more effectively and less stressfully because we are used to it. It's more important to the people who have a bad memory like me. However, it's reasonable to say that daily routine is quite boring to somebody active and dynamic. What factors influence most people's daily routines? There are several things contributing to a person's daily routine. Firstly is age. Yeah, an old person cannot have a dynamic timetable like the young. Besides, the characteristic of the timetable maker should be considered. I think so. Thank you very much. Yes. The speaking test is now finished. Yes, thank you very much. All right, Dan. That was my big knock, mm. the hot girl. <laughs> um, what do you think of her performance? Uh, I think yeah, I think she was actually uh, quite good. The one thing that I'd really recommend for her to improve on is really explaining her answers more. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed at the beginning of the test, some of her answers were really short. And in the real IELTS test, the examiner would ask a follow-up question. So, you know, what, which part of your country are you from? The north. Mm -hmm. They might ask something in more detail. Mm -hmm. So instead of just answering the question directly, you should always explain more, like why more, you know, where, who, etc. Yeah. Um, but I will say her pronunciation I thought was quite clear. I, I was very impressed with her pronunciation. Uh, although her, her speed of speech is a bit slow, she is able to get through. Mm -hmm. um, she's not stopping too often to, to think of language. Right. So it's a little bit slow, but she is able to, to give all, uh, you know, enough, enough ideas. And she did get much better in parts two and three, right. where she was explaining in more detail. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my advice for her would be uh, longer answers in part one, and also maybe uh, a little bit more uh, advanced vocabulary would help. Mm -hmm. Apart from the delivery of speech, what are some of the good vocabulary that she used? Uh, I, I, I didn't hear any idioms. Uh, that was one thing I noticed was missing. Um, so normally I'd comment on some good idioms that I heard, but I didn't actually hear any, um, any idioms from that one. But she does have enough vocabulary to cover all of the ranges of questions. Mm -hmm. But I was waiting for some of that really uh, less common or idiomatic vocabulary, but I didn't hear too much of it. Right. So let's see what she thought about her performance. Sure. All right, Ngao, how many points do you think you have? I'm not sure about this, but I hope that is seven. Yeah. <laughs> so she said that um, she estimates to have a seven. Do you think it's a fair assessment? To get a seven, I think she'd need to work on her fluency, mm -hmm. which is the first category. Uh, which would be speaking a little bit faster and extending her answers a bit more. And also in her vocabulary, like I said before, uh, trying to use more less common vocabulary and, and some idiomatic language. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she's close, but she'd need to do a little bit more to, to get mm -hmm. a seven, I think. Yeah, I think those are some good tips. So we're going to go on to the next part, and it is the writing section. Mm -hmm. Guys, the next, basically, clip for you is going to be the writing tips, and this is going to be on hedging language. So in your opinion, what is really hedging in so the IELTS? So hedging basically means uh, using language so that you're not too strong. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I say, it will rain tomorrow, it means I'm 100% sure. 
but hedging might mean, might, you might say, uh, it could rain tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It might rain tomorrow. It's probably going to rain tomorrow. So that you're a little bit less strong in your, in your opinions. Mm -hmm. And for IELTS, it's really important because if you're making a prediction about the future, you don't want to be too strong. Um, so instead of saying, for example, uh, the effects of this are, mm -hmm. you might say the effects of this might, might be. be. So what are some of the hedging vocabulary that people can remember, people should remember, yeah. um, um, in order to portray this? Sure. Most In English we call them modal verbs. So mm -hmm. modal verbs are things like may, might, might. could, mm -hmm. uh, possibly, probably, and there's degrees, right? So you have possibly, probably is a bit stronger than possibly, mm -hmm. um, but basically modal verbs. And, and in English, there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, so may, might, could, uh, possibly, probably, etc. All right, so that was the writing tip on hedging language. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's time for my favorite part of the show, I think. Uh, yeah, it is also my favorite part of the show, the voice of the week section. The next voice of the week, the one this week, is going to come from a country that is just a little close, closer to you than to Vietnam, maybe. Okay. And it's England. Oh, uh, England, okay. Yes. Okay. He is a Vietnamese student studying in England. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So, Duke, if you're watching, you're up this week. Stay tuned and see yourself on TV. So I would like to talk about a project that I took part in a few months ago in March 2016, just before I had my Easter holiday. My friends and I made a video called What Do Foreigners Think of Vietnam? And there were a number of people involved in this project. Um, two or three of my friends played the role of the cameraman, whereas I was the idea creator and the video editor who published the video, the finished video, on social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube. Um, in the project, we asked people from a number of countries and a wide range of different backgrounds, such as Libya, China, Nigeria, um, Britain. Uh, there are also people coming from different religious backgrounds like Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. Um, the, the question for foreigners was that when I mentioned Vietnam, what would be the first three things that appear in their mind? And it came as a surprise for me that the majority of foreigners actually mentioned the Vietnamese food, people, students, um, Vietnamese dress, clothing, and obviously the Vietnam War. Some of them even see Vietnam as a very attractive tourist destination. Um, the video was a good opportunity for me to have a subjective idea of what Vietnam looks like in the eyes of foreigners. It was also a good way to make friends with people from different backgrounds. And most importantly, the project improved my ability to create professional videos. So I really like that delivery. I think it was very clear. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was very genuine. Yeah. Very, very good delivery of speech. It felt very ad lib. So ad lib mm -hmm. means something where you don't prepare too much in advance. Mm -hmm. So although he, it seemed like he had some notes maybe, but most of the time it seems like he was speaking very spontaneously, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I, I really admire because a lot of people for, for these things. It's very easy to write a script and just read the script, but uh, mm -hmm. it seemed very ad-lib. Yeah, so I think you mentioned a really important uh, point because, you know, when we take the IELTS exam, it is eventually for us to know how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And one part of being able to speak any language is, you know, the ability to ad-lib, right? Exactly. The ability to speak about anything, anytime, anywhere without having a script. Because when, you, when we do write out a script, you know, it, it helps us initially in the beginning, but then at the end, it, it doesn't sound natural. Exactly. I think when a lot of people are practicing for IELTS, they tend to uh, do it in an unnatural way. Mm -hmm. And when they get to the real IELTS test, they, they can't cope with you know, new topics and difficult questions because they're so used to practicing and scripting their answers. So that, I think that's a really good example of uh, dealing with uh, speech naturally and in, in a very uh, spontaneous way. Absolutely. Now let's come to the more fundamental question. Do you think a university education is necessary in this day and age? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, you see a lot of very high profile people like uh, Steve Jobs yeah. dropped out of university, Bill Gates dropped out of university, and a lot of people think that 
if these superstars were successful without university, mm -hmm. why should I go to university? Yeah. But the reality is I think those are some very, very few exceptions to the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this day and age, having a university education is like having a high school education, yeah. say 20 years ago. Yes. It's kind of like the new baseline. So uh, I think it's still important, but not every university education is equal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of what do you want to achieve from your education. You could just go to classes and take exams, yeah. or you could really benefit from it and do extra activities, volunteer work, clubs, etc. Yes. So it really depends what you want from your education. Right. And I also think, you know, the, the mentality that a university education is not necessary because all of these people have succeeded without one is kind of like a fallacy because, you know, it, it works for other people. It doesn't necessarily mean it works for you. So yeah. I think, you know, for people that are deciding whether to go to university or how to go to university should really consider what they want and what is yeah. required for what they, where they want to be in the future. Exactly. And it depends yeah. on the field. I mean, there's certain fields where a university education is not that important. Correct. You know, like, for example, if you're a graphic designer, maybe, mm -hmm. it's more your portfolio and yes. the things that you can show rather mm -hmm. than the certificates that you have. So it does depend on your field as well. Agree, agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think a, a lot for, for the Vietnamese education, a university is the entrance way to a better future. Yeah, yeah in that's, general. Yeah. yeah, in general. So thanks so much for coming on to the show. For sharing some of your viewpoints on university. Thanks for inviting me back after all these episodes. <laughs> yes, and of course, as always, we hope that you come back. I'd be happy <laughs> all <the> to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so guys, this is the end of the episode on university. But of course, it's not the end for your education because you know, university is probably one of my best experiences. My college experience was probably some of the most memorable times I've had. So if you're preparing to go to university, hopefully you'll be able to pick a university that is right for you. And of course, if you need to study for the IELTS to prepare for that process, make sure you do it well so that you have a lot of options. But of course, as always, for every week, you know, we always remind you to take a video. We always remind you to use social media, use YouTube use Facebook to send us your videos so that you can be featured on the Voice of the Week section. So for next week, we hope to go through all of your videos and feature you again. We've come to the end of this Dama IELTS episode on university. I hope that we've been able to inspire you to dream big when it comes to your university education. If you're already in the process, make sure you do all of your research and make sure you follow the right directions. And if you're still considering where to go, remember to explore your choices, explore yourself, as well as explore what you like and what you can do for, for the society. And that's it for this episode of Dama IELTS. We'll see you again next time. But of course, it's not the end of my ending session because as you can see, we have the whole crew right here and they are all studying. And what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, even if you've had your university education, even if you've discovered your university, always make sure to continue to learn and continue to study. And because learning is just not always in the classroom, it's outside of the classroom as well. We'll see you again next time and it's bye-bye for real now. Ciao, ciao.